Hi, this is example number four from section 18.5. So here we have a rod, a B that is at rest in the position shown, and the spring is unstretched for that position as well. This is, and um, it has smoothed surface all along, so we don't have friction. And we are uh, being asked to find the angular velocity of rod AB for theta equals zero. So when the bar has rotated 45 degrees and is at a horizontal position and is being released from the uh, shown position and is at rest. So this is a problem that involves forces because we have the spring force and that have weight of the bar and involve, uh, and we are being asked to find velocities. So when we have velocity and forces, one good approach to solve a problem is to use the principle of work and energy. So that's what I'm going to be using for the solution of this problem. So principle of work and energy, as, as you recall, we can write it in different forms. The way I like to write it is the work done by non-conservative forces from position one to position two is equal to the total energy of position two and being the total energy, kinetic energy plus potential energy minus the difference between the position two and the position one, kinetic energy and potential energy at position one. Since we have smooth surface and the other forces that are involved, which are weight and the springs, we can treat them as conservative forces. We can say that the work of non-conservative forces is zero. So we here actually have a problem of conservation of energy. So we can say actually that the total energy in position two is equal to the total energy in position one. So we need to find now why are all these values. Let's start for position one. Since we start at rest, so let's write that here, start at rest, we can say that the kinetic energy is zero. Potential energy At one, we know that the two forces that create potential energy will be the weight, let's call it like that, and the spring. We will put a datum here, so, so we can say that if this is our reference that we will use for both positions, we can say that this is zero because we have no potential energy right there. This is the center of gravity of my bar, right? What about the spring? They said that the spring is unstretched for that position. So actually, we can say that this is zero too. At the end, we can say that both potential energies or both forces that contribute to the potential energy uh, are, for the reference, are zero. So our potential energy is zero. So we only have uh, energy at the end position, so we have the Let's calculate the potential energy for, poten for position two. Position two, then we have the same as before. It will be the gravity and the spring, right? What is the potential energy by the gravity? We know that in, let me draw the second position so that we we understand what we're talking about. I like it. I like to do a little sketch of the second position right here. So here we will have that bar will be horizontal, and the spring Let me draw the spring with another color. So this spring right here, we will have it right here. And now it's stretch. 
So now we do have a potential energy done by the spring. And we have the datum in the same place. So that was the posi initial position of my bar with 45 degrees. So we need to calculate that distance will give me that uh, height will give me the potential energy. So we know that the potential energy is negative because I lost potential energy, will be mass, gravity, and height. And the potential energy of the spring, you know that is one half K of the spring for the stretch of that uh, spring, which would be S squared. So what would be that HP? So if this is 0 0.5, that will be negative. The mass of that bar is, did I write it right here? No, I did not write it. Let me look at the problem. So the mass is, mass is 30 kilograms. That's known. So it will be negative 30, gravity 9.8, and H will be 1.5 half of it, so it's 0 0.75, right, because it's the half of the length, and will be sine of 45. Okay, and what about the um, spring? The spring will be, so we, we have this length and the other length. So the, this length will be how much? So it would be 1 half k, which is 300, and then we have that length, 1.5 is the whole length of the bar, and that's the length, uh, the, the spring will stretch, net minus oh, 1.5 cosine of 45, which is one stretch length. So that's the potential energy in the second position. If we calculate that, I have those values, let me write them D here, uh, that will be equals to negative uh, 156.08 plus 28.95, which is equals to negative 127.12 joules. So that's my potential. So I have this value is zero, this value is zero, and I have this value. I just have to calculate the kinetic energy. So for the kinetic energy, We have to calculate the kinetic energy respect to one specific point. So let's say that we want to calculate it respect to my center of gravity. That will be 1 half mass velocity of gravity squared plus 1 half my uh, mass moment of inertia, angular velocity, which what is what I want to find. So as you see, we have here two variables. So I need to do a kinematic analysis to be able to relate those two variables. So let me, right here, I, I will do the kinematic analysis. And the first thing that I, I, I need to see from my diagram is that uh, what I do have is the trajectories of those velocity in the final position. So uh, velocity R is going downwards and velocity b is going to the left, right? Because I have the bar going down, so that's the two velocities. So to calculate the velocity of the center of gravity, but I need to calculate first the velocity of those two points to be able to relate it to that. So I'm going to first find out those two velocities, and then I will find the velocity of the center of mass. So I will say that velocity of b, which I know is in negative i, is equals to the velocity of A, which is I know is in negative J, plus angular velocity, which is in negative K, cross 1.5, which is in negative I. That gives me that this is negative J, and this is 1.5 Y, and which direction? K times I is J, and this, so it gives me positive J. So at the end, I say here, this is only in J, and this is I. So that leads me to say that the velocity of A is 1.5 uh, omega, or angular velocity in the second position, and the velocity of B is equals to zero. 
because those are my two scalar equations, right? This is i and this is 2r in j. And now that I have the velocity of b, I can calculate the velocity of g as a vector will be the velocity of b plus ne negative uh, plus negative omega 2k cross 0 0.75 i. So I have here that the velocity of g will be negative 0 0.5 velocity 2. in j. Okay, finally day and I have related both velocities. So I go back to my t and I have one half, the mass is 30, velocity 0 0.75 omega 2 all that square plus one half and then I have to calculate the mass moment of inertia. The mass moment of inertia for my bar, you know, all that is 112, the mass times the length, square, and angular velocity square. So here I can calculate that. I will write you the, how much is that? That's 11.25 oh, angular velocity to square. So this is, let me write here at 2 to recall that we are calculating this. So now we have that one too. So, finally, we can come back to that. So, let me give me a space here. T2 plus V2 is equal to 0. And I have then that uh, what I have here is 11.25 velocity 2 squared minus 127.12 is equal to 0. So, angular velocity in the second position is 3. 0.36 radians per second. That's the result where we're looking for. So to review, we use the principle of work and energy, and since no conser no non-conservative forces are zero, the work for non-conservative forces are zero, we have the conservation of energy. And it's very important that we have to understand that this is an scalar equation, and it's only one equation, and we have we had two unknowns in my kinetic energy, so we had to do a kinematic analysis to relate those two variables to get only one variable in our equations to be able to solve for that variable.